Today, I have another video that ties in perfectly with what I like to call the craft of frontend. And this thing is actually super simple and so easy to fix. However, you don't want to know how often this is overlooked in the real world. And you have probably already seen the title of this video, that thing are footers that float somewhere mid page. <sighs> Please don't do it, it's so easy to fix and that is exactly what I will show you today. Imagine you just created the greatest website of all time. And then all of a sudden everything gets put into a CMS for example, or maybe there's a 404 page or a user with a fairly large resolution and what they see is exactly this. The black bar is the footer and that thing floats somewhere mid page. <sighs> no, you don't need to do this. So one of the fixes people tend to do is they go into the page and then you look, for example, the main tag up where all of the content is and you just go in there and you'd say class name is min height screen, for example, to make it 100 viewport height. And that fixes it because the content is now larger and this footer is at the bottom. However, the footer can already be in view. There's no reason that it should be at the bottom of the page. So this to me is also not a proper fix. Luckily, that fix has become super easy now we have CSS Grid. And that is what we're gonna use to fix this. So let's go back and let's quickly remove the 100 viewport height and take a brief look at the HTML that we already have. We have the header component, which is our main navigation. Then we have the main tag where all of the page's content is in. And finally, we have the footer. So now how can we fix this? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to wrap all of these three elements within a single parent diff. So in this case, we have a React fragment here, but we can turn that into a real diff. So this way, the these three elements are within the same parent. Now, if we quickly jump into the HTML, because we are actually rendering a React app here, you would already see that it actually is already wrapped inside of a single diff, because this is what will render the app. If you were using plain HTML and you would have everything inside of the body tag, for example, then still you would need to wrap it inside of a parent because otherwise you, for example, have all these script tags that are also in there and maybe some random widget that gets injected and then your layout might break again. So the important thing here is to wrap your header, footer and main content within a single diff. So that's what we've done. And if we go back, of course, nothing changed. However, one thing we can do now is we can, for example, say we give this a background of red 100 for now. So we just have a color. Then you see that the red background is, of course, behind everything including the footer, but it doesn't stretch fully to the bottom. Now, this is where you could use 100 viewport height, because what we want to do is we say min height screen. Then in regular CSS, we're saying min height 100 viewport height. Then, of course, this extends to the bottom. However, 100 viewport height is still not the best solution here because especially on iOS Safari, for example, but pretty much every mobile device, you will see that you still have a vertical scroll bar because the address bar is taken into account with the 100 viewport height. So instead of using 100 viewport height, we can use 100 dynamic viewport height because this unit suddenly takes into account that address bar and dynamically updates based on whether it's expanded or collapsed. Also note that I've added a min height. So it's not a height, but a min height because it should of course be able to expand. And if we do that, and we go back, we see that we still have the exact same result. However, we're pretty close. What we can do now is we can say we make this display grid. And if we then would hop back, what you will see is that the footer is already at the bottom of the page, but it's still not working the way you expect it to be. If we would inspect it and then we would enable the grid guides, then you see that the lines of the grid are actually not in the right place. So this header, even though the white background only extends to there, its row extends all the way down here. And the reason for that is because by default, all these three rows, which there kind of are now, are divided equally over the height they have available. But we can change that. In Tailwind, we can use grid rows and then we can add square brackets to create our own custom rows. So in there, we can first add auto, 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 which is the default that gets added. And if we then go back, you see that we still have the exact same result. And you also see that Tailwind generates grid template rows, which you would need if you use regular CSS, and then three times auto. However, what we can do is instead of using three times auto, we can use a fragment to say, fill up all the remaining space. And the thing we want to have fill up the remaining space is the main content. So the way this grid template rows works is you define a setting for each of the different rows. In this case, we have three rows because we have three different elements in here. So that means that all of them now have the setting auto. However, if we want the main element to extend to the largest amount possible, then we should change that to one fragment. So that means that it's the center element. So if we would change it from auto to one fragment, 
you see that all of a sudden, and I can remove it again, the header as well as the footer become smaller and they are only the size that they need to be, like they're their minimum size. And then the main content grows as large as possible. So it also means that if we would zoom out, that you see that the footer will always stay at the bottom. And even if the main content would grow, the footer would still get pushed down like usual. First, let's go back and let's change this auto, auto, auto to auto 1FR auto. And then we can, for example, add another section in here, which is just a section with some content, which is 300 viewport height. So we have some height to scroll because if we then would go back, we have this height to scroll, but you also see that the footer is not visible and we can scroll all the way till the end and then the footer is there. So this way, even if that content is gone again, let me remove it we don't have that floating footer anymore. And that, my friends, is literally the only thing you have to do to prevent these floating footers. So to do a quick recap, what you need is you need to wrap both your header main element as well as footer and only these three, don't add any other elements in there. You need to wrap them in a single diff. Then you make a display grid, add a min height of 100 dynamic viewport height on there. Then you specify the grid rows as auto one fragment auto. So the one fragment part, which is the center, the main element grows as large as possible. And that's literally it. If you, for example, don't have a footer, what you then need to do is of course you remove the footer, but what you also need to do is you need to change these grid rows. You just remove the auto because they correspond to the number of elements that are in there. And if you do that, everything still works and this main content is extended to the maximum height. Also, if we would, for example, add a footer back and we would say we have a sticky top zero header. So that means that it's positioned sticky with top zero. And then we add our scrollable portion back to, then you see that our header is sticky and everything still works. So even with position sticky, this method still works perfectly fine. And again, there's literally no reason that you skip this. So please implement this in your next project. If you want to learn more about these things that I call the craft in front end, then definitely subscribe to this channel because there's probably a lot more that you like. Also check out my website frontend FYI, where I also have a pro plan and I'm working on a frame motion course, but also in the future a Tailwind CSS course, which is pretty much just a CSS course where we will also discuss many of these amazing things. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.